Hey guys, so this is my uh, long overdue video on upgrading your heating system in your, your Humvee. This is my um, 1989 M998. Um, it has a, a 6.5 liter GEP. It is a three speed. Uh, one of the uh, first upgrades I did to it was uh, putting in a, a 200 amp dual voltage system. Um, I did that because I'm going to be adding a lot of electrical. Go along the side here. Uh, yes, I am a Fallout 4 fan. Another improvement I did, which it's almost a must if you're taking long trips, is um, I added a Rhino carrier. Especially like us, we've taken trips to... Uh, Michigan from Pennsylvania a couple times even in the, the winter time so it's kind of a must another uh, addition I did was putting in the um, the cargo uh, separator um, I wanted to minimize as much water and and uh, snow getting into the cabin as possible um, so these brackets um, you could find the one. The second one is uh, the other. The other side is really difficult to find. But if you look hard enough, they're out there. Um, if not, there's guys that will gladly make you um, a set of them or uh, the other one that you need. So, in addition to putting the uh, the cargo wall in, I put this um, uh, the the cargo. Uh, it's like a, a seal bracket. Uh, it goes along the bottom of the floor and up against your um, your cargo wall. And um, it has a rubber uh, seal that goes underneath in here. But in addition to that, I added some uh, kind of like a outside gasket weather uh, proofing rubber. Um, I forget the name of what it was I used, but it, it's, uh, it's black in color and um, it's extreme temperature. I added this uh, this here, this gasket, which has a uh, kind of a rubber lip on the inside. So when you slide the cargo wall down, it's actually closing like you're closing a door and it seals up there. Now, it's overkill because you still have in this corrugation here, you still can see the light from outside. If the rain does come down from in here, it's never going to get in here. Um, so I'm not worried about that, but what this primarily does, this rubber seal, is keeps this from rattling around when you're driving. That's the main reason I put that in. And then also down there, you could see in addition to all the other stuff I did, that's uh, black neoprene rubber that I put in there um, underneath that, underneath the wall. So when it comes down, um, it sits on top of that. Okay, so this is my heating system. Um, that is a uh, 60,000 BTU unit. Um, and uh, it is the single most important thing you could do. In my opinion, if you got a good truck already, it's the single most important thing you could do if you live in colder climates. Um, I was in the military for 14 years, so I know these trucks and I know what they can and can't do, and I know how horrible they are in the wintertime. And um, over on the other side, uh, the hose that comes out of the heater box, we used to, we had an extension on that, and we used to share the hose between everybody, and we'd stuff it up our, you know, arm sleeve of our jackets, and we'd get a few, few minutes of uh, heat, and then we'd pass the hose around, um, especially when you're up in the, really severe cold mountain regions uh, in some third world country uh, heat is everything and in the earlier vehicles they, they really suck the heat anyways okay so um, I didn't do anything fancy to it um, this system is by a company called Spals S-P-A-L-S I believe and I'll give you the part numbers and everything to it um, what I did was I found myself a nice radio tray 
Now, I believe this one had a front bracket this way for a VIX-1 system. I, I took that out and um, I stripped these down, B-blasted them, and I used a, um, a Kark paint. Um, it's in a rattle can. I forget the company that puts it out, but it's supposed to be a replacement or the same paint used on these vehicles. And you guys are from the forum, or you, you already know about it or should know about it. Um, now, start when I first started on this, that hose down in there for the footwell, it wasn't really blowing any heat. So doing further inspection and removing this channel here, that hose all the way back was deteriorated. So if you've got no heat down here, I guarantee you that if you pull this off up here, you'll see nothing but rotted, um, deteriorated hose. Um, so that's something you'll need to be replacing. Uh, let's see. Um, all right, so right there is the uh, box system uh, with the switch. Now, what I used is the same exact switch, and you can get it from anywhere, like the Hummer parts guy or something. Um, got the same exact switch. The box behind this plate is a found item. There's a company that sells switch boxes for Humvees. Just buy them without the switch switches. You don't need the front cover or nothing. Just get the back housing because it has a bracket that comes off and you just go tap right into these two bolts right here and it, and it secures it so you don't have to drill or do anything. Now, if you have another accessory set up here, you'll have to figure, you know, changing that up on your vehicle. But what I did here was I machined this plate, this front plate out of aluminum. And um, if you guys want to buy those from me, I can make them in a small run and then uh, so you got that covered. This data plate, what you do is you buy a brand new data plate and you cut it right there. And then you'll see I have the silver uh, a trim going around the frame trim if you want to call it that all I did was I masked this off and I took some steel wool and I removed the black so it looks like it's factory and then I put that in there with the switch now wiring this in what you do is um, for the guys that that have these vehicles and are working on you probably already have the special pliers for working with the electrical connectors on these vehicles that's that's a must-have um, I don't recommend kind of using bra uh, you know brackets or clamps or um, uh, connectors electrical connectors from say like uh, pet boys or uh, you know hardware store get get the stuff used for these vehicles because the first problems that a lot of guys run into is grounding issues. Don't try and make your own grounding harness half-ass. Do it. There's plenty of information out there on what to do, what wire to use, what uh, connectors and stuff. Um, take the advice of the guys that have been working on these because um, if you don't make the grounding harness right, you're just, just going to still have issues. and. Um, and I believe there's guys that are even making them and selling them for you. So you just buy them and put them in. But um, what I did was I made a factory harness. It's a Y system. I pulled the power in on this switch off of the back of the switch. And I put a Y on there. And then one half goes in back into this switch. The other half goes to this switch. The ground... You pull this instrumentation panel off and up in the corner, right around up on top of the temperature gauge system there or the temperature gauge, there is a uh, grounding mounting bolt. Just tie into that, put a ground wire from there. So now you've got your power and your ground going to your system. Then there's two more leads that come off this switch. Uh, one's a high and one's low. Now on the back of these uh, heater boxes, most of them have uh, 
three uh, speeds, uh, low, medium, and high. You're only using two because the switch is only made for two. Now there is rotary switches to give you that third leg. Stay away from it. I mean, the the fan speed between having three speed system, uh, three speed system. I already tried it. There's, it's neg negligible at best. You know, so you're really not going to tell the difference. I have medium and high. Um, you can choose either low and medium or high and medium. Uh, depends on what you want to plug into. But you can also reach back in there if you want to just go to, you know, switch those wires around. You can have access to that. So let's go on the other side here. All right. So here's how I have this this side set up. Now, I want to make note, I did not alter the existing heating system, meaning I tapped into it, but I didn't remove it. I didn't change that. I left it because I use it as a defroster for my windshield. And that's all it's used for. So... This particular unit, you can change. You'll see it has duct work. It has uh, uh, two and two um, on each side. You could take this off and put it here, or you can, leave, you know, you can, you know, whatever is best for you and works for your setup. If you got radios and stuff, you're going to have to figure something else out. I know a lot of guys got really decent radio systems. Um, the way I have this system set up here, I, it's not going to really fit in here too well. Um, but um, this is my system. I don't need a bunch of radios. I do have a VIX system I'm putting in, a, a standard VIX 1. And I'm going to mount a unit here and on the other side so that when me and Melissa are driving somewhere, we can communicate. But anyways, all right, so this is this rubber hose. You can get it from McMaster Car, and I'll give you part numbers. This stuff is not going to rot. Um, this is awesome stuff, and um, that's what I have back in here, too, um, is this. It's, it's still very flexible, but it's, it's a harder rubber. It's very industrial, um, industrial strength, so. And um, this hose, which you can't move, but... You can uh, use this, which I, what I've done is I have it for the heating uh, going into the, uh, uh, the passenger's uh, footwell. And then they also have this right here. Um, more than enough um, uh, heat uh, for the passenger. Now... These are the two hoses that come off of this. Now, these hoses are found, and I'll give you parts on those as well. I believe I got them from Napa. Um, and what they are is they're three foot long. Um, they call them bypass hoses. They're universal. One uh, side will have a 90 degree bend in it, and then the rest is just a straight run. Perfect for what I needed. This here is um it, it's uh it's a kind of a protective um coil for for uh cooling hoses i believe i got this from pet boys again i'll give you the part numbers on that now down in here if you look back in there right there and there these are two uh fiber they're they're made of like a glass fiber injected plastic um, might be carbon fiber, I don't know, but they're, they're high temp, uh, 90 degree elbows. And what I did was I removed the heater core from here and I cut my inlet going into the heater core. I cut that down. Then I took a flaring tool and I flared the one end and then I took, um, sandpaper and cleaned up. So uh, I, I made a nice seal for the new hose. Try it so you can see this, all right? 
So what you see here is this is my primary heating system now. The coolant comes in, it goes to my main unit, it comes out, goes into the factory unit, and then back out to the engine. Um, it works perfectly. Um, some guys will say, well, the uh, pump on these are, isn't strong enough to move that amount of coolant that, that you would need an additional type uh, uh, electric pump or something. That's not the case at all. It's, it works beautifully. You don't need any additional uh, pump or anything like that. Another cool thing is that I replaced that rubber grommet that goes through the, I guess what you call firewall. Um, and this 90 degree elbow goes all the way out by a couple of inches. Um, so uh, it worked perfectly um, for this application. The other 90 degree I put right here. Now this, um, this right here, uh, anybody that was in the military, you'll see some of the uh, red dot systems on your, your Humvees have this kind of um, insulation wrap. What this is one thing that was really difficult to try and track down. So what I ended up doing was I went to Joanne's Fabrics. I got canvas. I also got ironing board material. I got out my sewing machine. Yes, I, I freaking sew. Um, my career dictates that I need to sew and embroider as well. Um, and um, Velcro and, and I made myself some patterns and made my own. And I could share this with you, or if you, any of you guys want me to make them, I'm sure I could do a small run of them and sell them uh, to you guys. All right. So one one note I want to I want to mention here before going any further. When you start on this project, the heat that you get out of this system is going to be indicative or it's going to be in relation to how well is your, your heater core here? How well is your radiator system? Is it clean, unobstructed, um, and already in good shape? If it isn't, you really need to do those things. You know, clear the fins, straighten them, flush out the system, put new, uh, just flush the whole system out and put new antifreeze in um mixed properly that's number one a lot of guys buy these trucks they hardly ever touch those things and that's important um if the heater core looks suspicious here replace it don't even mess with it you're going to have this off don't don't fuck with it just replace it it's it's not that expensive this way you have a a, a system that that's sound and you don't ever have to worry about a leak here all these hoses i replaced and like I said, that one that runs along here is back here. So you have to take this whole system, this whole uh, housing and ductwork off. And it, it's really not that complicated. Now, I have at it. There's a gentleman in Russia. I can't remember his name off, off top of my head. But he was making glass for guys for their civilian Humvees. I forget what form it was. And... Um, he, there were 12 volt systems and I had reached out to him. I said, listen, I got a, an M998. Um, can you make me a set of uh, uh, windshields um, for a 24 volt system for, for my truck? And he said, yeah. And I think, I, my God, I think he did it in less than a month. Um, he designed up some, uh, the glass system and uh, manufactured it and shipped it and it came beautifully shipped um it is got dot approved uh, probably not gonna see it but anyways take my word for it it's, it's dot approved all right i'm gonna try and do this one-handed guys i should have had this already open For you guys that are getting bored right now, just bear with me. All 
Okay. The heater box system um, that's in there. Uh, one of the th one of the things that you're you're going to have to do is remove this um, because the bolts and stuff are in this uh, compartment in here to get at uh, the the heater box. Um, it's kind of a pain um, in some ways because you can do it yourself, but you're going to have your you got to take the door off. You're going to have one arm all the way in here and one arm all the way underneath. Um, what I did afterwards was uh, they have these. Um, uh, let me see. I'll show you. Uh, if I could find them. Uh, okay, you got a system like this. Um, they have these um, squash nuts. So you drill a hole into your aluminum. You place the nut. You put this tool in there. You crank. They have pneumatic ones too, but this is a this is a, a a small version where you can get into tight places, and then it squishes a nut into the aluminum. You'll never have to worry about trying to align nuts and getting them to stay in place while you put the bolts in. Okay, that is your um, your valve, your heater valve. It's what uh, controls the flow um, of coolant going into your heater core. And that cable right there is what goes into the uh, driver's compartment side. And it's your, your heater control. First thing I did was I replaced this. Um, they get corroded. They get some blockage. And that control, that flow... Um, I mean, you want that to be optimum. Uh, so just go ahead and replace that. If yours is fine, don't worry about it. I also replaced this cable because that can be a pain when it starts getting corroded to try and uh, move that in and out. So that one elbow I was telling you about, it comes out right there and it sticks out to about there. So I just put the, you know, a new piece of um, coolant hose in between there and there's your, your, your outlet comes back out right there yeah okay so when you go to start this the very first thing you're going to need to do is drain enough coolant out to be able to work on this and if you look at this hose follow this hose down it goes into a kind of a, a metal hose that's a y right underneath there is a nut it's a drain plug excuse me, drain plug. You want to remove that and that and, and get as much out. And what I did was I opened up the cap here and then when I drained enough out, that's when I, I pulled these two hoses off. And these are your, these is your in inlet and outlet for your heater core. Okay. And then uh, once I got enough out, I put the, uh, the plug back in down there. And um, I got my shop vac out, my wet shop vac, and I put a reducer on it to go into the bottom, uh, go into the end of this. And um, I took the shop vac and turned it on. Now this is dis you want this disconnected. And what it did was it it vacuumed out most of the coolant that was still in that heater core, and that helps too. Okay, so again, down in there, it's a metal uh, hose. It's kind of a Y-shaped. Underneath there is where your drain plug is that you want to work with. And while I was at it, I went ahead and replaced these coolant hoses right away. Um, I was going to use um, the crimp-on clamps, and then I decided, you know what, if I'm on the side of the road, um, this is the way to go. If, if you're driving uh, distances with your truck. All right. Pretty sure that covers the majority of, uh, the majority of uh, what you need to know. 
it's a very clean install with this. Um, I machined this up and I used a, a cark paint and a rattle can. Let's wait for the noise pollution to go by. We have a lot, we have two, two types of vehicles that go by in this area. One is a gazillion Amish in their buggies and bicycles. And um, guys with these um, Hondas and, and whatnots with uh, mufflers on them that do absolutely nothing but be a nuisance. Um, again, this is the way to go. Um, and I'll, I'll put the plans up for this. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and again, recap, your ground is up here. It's part of your temperature gauge on the inside of here. Hot off of that, put it into a Y, plug one button back in there, one end into there. Easy access to the connectors back there, as I said. Uh, these are my end leads for my um, my uh, windshield, which um, I'm redoing the routing of those. Um, here's another thing. You can find the exact um, uh, sheathing used for electrical wiring on these Humvees. Um, maybe the Hummer parts guy has it. I forget where I got it, but it, you, you buy it in spools. And that's what I put all my wiring in. It gives it a clean install and it protects the wire. And um, again, uh, I get on medium heat in the compartment area up front, I get about 119 degrees. And then when I put the temperature probe back into that corner and on this corner, I got about 98 degrees. So plenty warm. Uh, for you guys uh, Here's another thing I want to make a note of for uh, especially um, you gents that are up in the uh, even harsher climates um, I have this as an additional backup although I don't need it. Um, I very rarely ever pull it down once I put that in I it's a uh, It's a curtain for a two-man But it will work on a four-man Um so you can unravel this and it drops right down um, and you're separating uh, the, the front and the back. So now that system is now even, even more uh, efficient. There's one more thing I want to touch on. A lot of guys, um, you have to look at all your air spots. If your, your top is shot and your insulation in your top is going, replace the top. That's, no, that's, that's a gimme. Um, you want to go around all your door seals. Now, a lot of guys don't know this, but the way to... You don't just bolt these doors on and align them. They bend. The doors will bend to fit the curvature of your frame. If, it's, if, if you don't do that... You're going to have air gaps, especially up in here. Now, up on here, where your top wraps underneath, what you can do uh, to, if you still have a problem with these, uh, these areas, is undo this, and then from McMaster car, this is, this is one type that I use. Don't, don't just go by this part number. But this is a type of neoprene rubber it has a uh, sticky back on one side. It's awesome stuff. Pull this out and on your door frame, put it underneath all up top here and then wrap this back around. So what this is gonna do is puff this out enough so that if you are still having problems with gaps, especially right here or down in here, you can put it on here. That will help out with your door seal. And um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, another thing, if you use this type of tray system, this is going to practically bolt right in with no real mods. The only thing I had to do is on the, the, the housing <laughs> itself, there's these two flanges, one on each side. I just slot it 
the holes that were there so that I can position this because there are two holes, literally the distance apart that's perfect for this system. So by slotting the holes, that, but they, were, they weren't this way by a little bit. So I just slotted the holes on each side. This thing dropped right in, bolted right up, didn't have any problems. Um, for those that are interested in mounts like this, um, it's by a company called Ram Mounts. You can get them for pretty much anything uh, from uh, holding your drinks to holding your cell phones. Highly recommend them. I, I got a whole box, a whole bag full of stuff from them. Um, let's see. Uh, this is a collection of every type of nut and bolt used on this vehicle. Um, this is an important tool if you're working on the electrical right here. It's your crimper. Highly recommend you pick one up if you're doing wiring on your truck. Um, if you're, if you got a buddy who's got a truck, you guys go in on it, loan them out. Um, I thought about loaning this out to the members, but um, it's an expensive tool, so I was just wondering, will I get it back? But anyways, so there you go. And they have attachments you can, you can get. Um, this is another tool I use. For the electrical, that gives you any information. And you guys can email me or message me, excuse me, and I'll try and help you out as much as possible. Um, again, there's a ton of stuff that you can get for these vehicles that you can use on a regular basis. Um, I was going to show you, I have all the electrical connectors. Um, there's like, uh, uh ceiling, um, uh, I guess ends, uh, they're like caps that, uh, seal up your wiring. Let me see if I, oh, here goes by. Wait, wait for it. Wait for it. Told you. <laughs> Let's see. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Here's what we got. This is really what you should be using when you're working on your wiring. And if you have to do a Y, you can make one up like that. Again, this is this is extremely important right there. I can't reach that other one, but okay, guys, there you go. There's my uh, truck. That's what I did for the heating system. Um, if you have any questions, hit me up.